Hey guys, James MC Reviews here. Welcome to another episode of the Cinematic Bucket List series. And today we're going to be talking about Godzilla. No, no, not that one. With Godzilla Minus One coming out, I wanted to do something Godzilla related. And up until this point, uh, I haven't seen all of the MonsterVerse movies except King of the Monsters and uh, Godzilla vs. Kong. So I wanted to see the 2014 film. To my surprise, it was not on Max. I'm guessing they moved it over to Apple TV because they've got that Godzilla show uh, over there now, but I wasn't able to watch it on Max. Um, I will still probably watch it uh, probably sometime next year because they've got that new Godzilla Kong movie coming out, but I wanted to do something uh, to honor Minus One coming out this weekend. So instead, I decided to take you guys all the way back and watch the original Godzilla movie released in 1954 and directed by Ishiro Honda. A series of nuclear weapons tests in Japan leads to the arrival of Godzilla, a giant, fire-breathing, nuclear-powered lizard monster who goes on a rampage page destroying everything. Now it's up to all of Japan's military and scientists to figure out a way to stop him before he destroys everything. I'm actually kind of glad that I watched this uh, now instead of the 2014 film. One, because it was actually pretty solid. And two, because it kind of fits theming of watching this in preparation for Minus One. Because when you look at the trailer for Minus One and you look at this movie, they both kind of act as like an origin story for Godzilla. I mean, I know that the franchise has been rebooted like four different times and there are like multiple different Godzilla movies that you could look to. Um, but I mean, this one feels a lot more closely connected to the Minus One movie that's coming out with it being set in Japan and, you know, showing sort of the the birth of Godzilla, if, if that's what you want to call it. And I thought it was actually pretty solid. Um, it does sort of have the same problem that a lot of these like giant monster movies have, like, not just Godzilla, but a lot of them, that whenever it cuts to the human characters, they are not the least bit interesting. They do make the smart decision of, like, cutting to Godzilla a lot quicker than, like, some of the more modern movies probably would have. And, I mean, they don't try to put a front towards, like, why the human characters are there. They're just there to, like, you know, give you something to worry about when this gigantic thing is rampaging through Japan and, you know, all this destruction is happening, you have a thing to, like, worry about being killed, essentially. Even with that being said, there isn't really much to any of these characters, like, aside from just providing exposition and, like, explaining how they're gonna resolve the problem. And the story as well is just your typical nuclear experimentation gone wrong releases giant lizard man madness ensues, etc. Um, which is fine, and I mean, keep in mind this was one of the first of its kind, so you kind of gotta, like, take it for what it is. There is some things about the story that, like, even while I was watching it, like, I was kind of like, wait, this, this probably could have been resolved a whole lot easier. Like, when one of the scientists is telling his, like, lady friend uh, about the, like, oxygen destroying machine or whatever, he, the thing that he built that will essentially destroy Godzilla, and he wants to keep it a secret because, like, the military will, like, ultimately use it as, find a way to use it as a weapon and stuff like that. But it's like, w wouldn't that be something, like, so what if they decide to use it as a weapon? You said yourself that there's going to be more things like Godzilla coming in the near future towards the end. So, like, wouldn't you want to have them prepared for that? But it's, it's whatever. There's a lot of, like campy stuff and stuff that doesn't make a whole lot of sense like that all throughout the Godzilla universe, so you, you kind of expect that going in, and this, like, I felt like had the least amount of it. And plus, when you actually, like, finally see Godzilla and when you start getting to the destruction, it is well worth it. Um, I think the, the practical effects during those sequences still, for the time, look really impressive. Like, like, yes, Godzilla at no point doesn't just look like a dude in a suit, but, like, the way that they shoot him and light him and the way that they play with perspective and the comping of, you know, the the sets and, like, the miniature sets and, like, the people and everything like that looks really impressive for the time, as well as, like, the visual effects, the fact that everything was done practically. Like, I think the only thing that had to have been done digitally was, like I said, the compositing and, like, some of the, like, fire breath was, like, drawn in and the energy and things like that. But, like, when you see shit getting destroyed on screen, like, 
knowing that that stuff was really there and like a person built them instead of a computer is really cool and it makes it like hit a lot harder like i remember um when James Rolfe was making the Angry Video Game Nerd movie and he had that behind the scenes featurette and he was talking about like when he had that like giant obviously Godzilla inspired like tentacle monster like destroying a city and how he was talking about like with computers you could just like digitally fix something if does something doesn't fall or break the right way whereas when you do it like practically you've only got really one chance to get it right and whatever happens is what's your, you're what you're gonna see on screen. Um, and I feel like that kind of not only makes it look and feel a lot better, but it also kind of raises the stakes as like, if you fuck up, like there's a greater risk if you fuck up. Whereas with a computer, like you could just fix it in post or whatever. But yeah, I think all that stuff, like the practical effects, the production design, the cinematography, the lighting, everything like that, when Godzilla shows up, still to this day like holds up really well. The soundtrack as well is really cool, especially the main theme, like when they're charging into battle against Godzilla, like it's really booming and epic and like ominous sounding, it's really cool. There are some scenes like even with it being uh, under an hour 40, like some scenes that kind of drag in parts, but like it's all worth it, like I said, when you get to the action and Naturally, there's gonna be a lot of campy, stupid stuff that doesn't make sense, but it's a Godzilla movie, so what would you expect? And yeah, just overall, um, I thought it was really fun. I thought it was a really good, uh, enjoyable time. Nothing perfect by any means, um, and I don't know how many times I'd go out of my way to watch it again, but I am very glad, I'm actually very glad that uh, I watched this instead of the 2014 film, because like, well, I mean, one, I don't know when else I would have gotten around to watching it anyway, but two, like, it and it ended up being a really cool, like, time capsule, and it ended up holding up a lot better than I expected it to. So, going to my ranking, I would have to give Godzilla 1954 a 3.5 out of 5. But anyway, that does it for this video. Let me know in the comments if you've seen the original Godzilla from the 50s. Did you love it? Did you hate it? How does it hold up? How does it compare to some of the other Godzilla movies? And are you excited for Minus One coming out this weekend? Let me know all that stuff down below. I've got more videos coming soon, but until then, be sure to like, subscribe, ring the notification bell so you can stay up to date on when I'm posting. Follow me on all my social media, subscribe to my main channel. Everything you need to know will be in the description. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you later.